Produced by Podcast Architects. Welcome back to The Path Forward. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Rick Fernandez, where we talk about innovation, education, and we have a lot of fun. I'm just going to tell you we're probably going to have some fun right now. We're at TASA Midwinter, and I've got uh, Dr. Michael Cardona from San Marcos Consolidated Independent School District joining me. This is the, the man, the mentor, the friend, the one that will say it like it is, no matter where he is, uh, or what time it is. So uh, how's, the, how's the conference going for you so far? It's been good. It's ti- a little tiresome right now. I've uh, hit the conference jet lag portion. Um, so for me, it started Saturday doing some mentor- mentorships, and, and uh, I'm happy to do those things. But, you know, Sunday had a lot of meetings that I think are important meetings we have to have uh, sure. to create policy. But I'm tired now. Are you? Uh, yeah, I'm tired. Now you're, now you're slumming it with me. So yeah. like... I haven't had my Peloton fix <laughs> in three or four days, so my legs are, are going here quickly. So. So you talked a little bit about mentorship. Uh, we've got some young, new superintendents uh, out and about. Uh, you want to give them some pearls of wisdom, uh, what they should be expecting, and some do's and don'ts maybe? Um, I, I think the, the, the best advice I could give any new superintendent is, is the higher you move up, the, the lonelier the chair gets. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we don't really, we tell people sometimes they need to own their chairs. They, they don't really own this chair. They have to, to, to work with, you know, individuals who have their own political um, beliefs and try to create policies around those. And so um, they really need to understand the stories uh, that each board member brings to a board meeting um, because I think that will help them uh, guide the system. And then, you know, the, the second piece of advice would be you know, if if your North Star is always students, then, right. you know, the policy decisions you can get them to make need to always benefit students and staff in, in some form or fashion. Would you encourage them, because you spoke a little bit about advocacy and, and legislation and all that stuff is an ongoing um, thing for us, particularly in Texas. Um, would you advise young superintendents to get involved in terms of the, the policy, the advocacy side of it? And, and if so, why would you think that's a good, a good move for them? Yeah, I, I mean, yes. I, I, think, um, I think everybody has an opinion about public educators and public education. Um, being a reformed former Catholic school student, you know. Did you say it first of all, reform? reform. Uh, yeah, I, don't, uh, I, I don't know about that, but I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you go with that. My mother would say fallen <laughs> Catholic school student, but, um, you know, you, um, people have a lot of opinions and they're putting that into practice right. and policy. And for far too long, educators, and I'm not talking just superintendents, I'm talking educators, have deferred, and in some cases, emboldened some of these people uh, to uh, attack the profession and and uh, I'll just leave it as you know if if a minister or a pastor or a politician is going to have an opinion about education well it's time to have an opinion back and to use our power um, to help reshape the narrative because I mean we're under attack right now I like it's, the, it's I've never seen anything like this and uh, you know book banning, you know, by people who say they're about individual freedom, it doesn't make sense to me. And so until we say something, they're going to keep doing it because, you know, superintendents play, um, or most of us play uh, a win-win game. We believe everybody can win-win. They're not playing a win-win game. They're playing a win-loss game and they're winning. And we just keep like smiling and don't want to get into the, the fray. And I've chosen to get into the fray, so. Yeah, no, and that's one thing we talked a little last night. I was joking with you. We were at an event, and, um, you know, we had, a, uh, your, by the way, your, your kids, your Marachi kids were unbelievable. Yeah, uh, thank you. I mean, they were awesome. Uh, you know, and you said, there's nothing like being a high school principal, because we used to get to see that all the time yes. as former high school principals. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, we, you had to calm the room down a little bit, because everybody's, you know, talking and, yeah. and, and um I always respected your fact that you're going to tell it like it is, and friend or colleague doesn't really matter. Like sometimes we got to hear the truth, 
Uh, and we, I would agree with that. I think that there is a lot of uh, stuff being slung around about public education and the school systems. Um, and you're seeing teachers, and not only teachers, but principals, superintendents, uh, make an exodus from mm -hmm. the profession. And I think we forget, uh, you know, come next year, well, who's going to be teaching our kids? Um, instead of, instead of uh, attacking, what about we support and we try to understand you know, how do we make the system a little bit better together? So hopefully, you know, opportunities like this where we can talk and chat and, and, and discuss how to navigate that and how to do it in a way that's going to get some, not only some attention, but some people understanding uh, the power that we do have. I think it's, it's important. It's never been as important. You know, you've got kids, I've got my own kids, and, and they're depending on us to get this right. Correct. You know, it's, it's been crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, anybody, if anybody knows my children, I, I think everybody would agree that no one has indoctrinated them. <laughs> they they um, have their own opinions and beliefs, and you know they advocate for themselves. And you know this idea that we are indoctrinating children and is I mean it's a. Have you ever seen the movie movie Idiocracy? Yeah. And I feel like we're living some of that right now. <laughs> well, yeah, indoctrination. I can't. I can't. Yeah, there ain't. I can't even do third grade math with them online, much less try to you know, get them to, to do what I want them to do. So um, there's so much outside influence. So you're trying to, to guide them as best you can, and we're, we're doing, it, I think, a, a great job under the circumstances in terms of school districts. Um, but it is a definitely a tough and thankless job at times. So let's get on some lighter subjects. So speaking of schools, you know, we talked a little bit about what kind of student Oh, Michael Cardona was, right? Yes, we have. <laughs> yes. We'll leave that at that. Yeah, well, no, not, give, you got to give me some funny stories. Okay. You, you got, I mean, it can be your childhood. It can be something that you had with your own kids that you could share. Something as a principal. I know you got time that, you know, but things that you look back on that gives you joy and a smile and, and, and you think on fondly. They're like, ah, oh, I can't believe that happened. So, you know, I've talked about this. The, my happiest moments were when I was a high school principal, I think. Um, that's when I think I was most in tune with kids and staff. Uh, not that I'm not happy now, but it was a different type right. of happiness. But I think the story, you know, I have a, a student reference that I use when I do applications. I, I have a student who uh, was a first-gen uh, college student, Michaela, we'll just say Michaela, and um, her husband's a captain, Aggie, graduate, he's a captain, and they're in Germany right now. But um, she wrote a letter to me, I think, that epitomized, that captured what I, well, she put into a, a words what I was trying to do with the campus mm -hmm. around culture and student advocacy, student self-advocacy, uh, teacher leadership, and talked about the transformation of the high school from when she was a freshman to high school, my visibility as, as a principal. And those are the things that, you know, we forget, you know, right? We do a hundred great things and then that, you know, we just finished talking about the war on education and that consumes us. And we, we sometimes forget the stories you know, and we still keep in contact. Um, I get messages from students on Facebook um, that, you know, will go something like, hey, we're, we're all at a bar drinking and talking about our high school days at MacArthur High School in San Antonio, and your name came up, sir, and we just want to tell you thank you because you were really hard on us. You were, like, all over us. You were telling us to make good choices, um, and we appreciate that, you know, you gave us so much of yourself um, because there is like we've yeah. talked about this you, there's a sacrifice of being an educator that no one sees and some families are better able to adapt to that and some it causes divorce yeah um, but those are the stories like that I keep on my phone um, to keep me going to like when things are going bad or when board you know community citizens are up and in front of us in a public forum saying things that are just crazy and uh, 
you have to remember those. So that's just one of many. But I keep that reference letter because it's that's the type of kid right. that Why you're... you wanted to produce, like yeah. this young lady. She's a, an amazing young lady. Yeah, no, those, I mean, those memories are the ones that you, when you're, the tough days, mm -hmm. you know, you, you think about, all right, this is the why, we do, why we do what we do, and why you, you, you put up with some of the, some of the abuse uh, sometimes, you know, but, um, you know, you've got a, one thing I've always noticed about you, you've got a great relationship with your admin staff, y'all keep, you work them hard, mm -hmm. but you keep it very light, you'll have a good time. How do you, how do you manage the, kind of the, the pull, the push and pull between, hey, we, it's time to get work done, but keep a great sense of humor, and, and you guys are always smiling together and having a good time. Um, I, I think it's a defense mechanism, probably. It's, you know, um, I had a doctor tell me that my uh, comedy is my defense mechanism, <laughs> my coping mechanism. <laughs> is this after I won't say what kind of doctor. I was about, but, okay. Yeah. Uh, but um, you have to laugh, and, um, you know, it's the job is consuming in a negative sense. We all worry about kids, and so, um, you know, they know. I, I don't need to use positional power. I do at some points, you do need to in crisis situations, but, you know, it's, I've always believed teachers drive change quicker than principals, and principals drive change quicker than superintendents. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think if the admin te team would were to tell you, you know, there's times we go into closed session and boards have at you and, you know, things they don't appreciate, things they're passionate about. And um, they'll, they understand that I, I am going to take the chewing out for them. Right. But then, you know, and we're going to walk out of that room, but that meeting the following Monday is going to be like, I took it for you now. What are we going to do to make this better? Because, you know, they were right. Yeah. You know, we messed up as a system and, you know, fix it. And so they know uh, when it's time to get to work, we get to work. And you got to have humor and laughter in them. And you got you, you, yeah, yeah. you have to make fun of situations. I mean, some of the stuff you just got to laugh at. Because if you don't, you, you're you going to get frustrated and yep. burn out real quickly. Yes, so. there's no doubt. What are some cool things happening in and around the San Marcos Consolidated Independent School District. Anything that the kids, I mean, I, I'm always following you guys on Twitter. Of course, you know I'm following your basketball team. Uh, They're good. You've got a heck of a, heck of a team. They're all right? juniors. I know. They're all juniors. So yeah. I've been following them pretty closely. But um, what other, any other uh, student events, student happenings going on that you can think of off the top of your head you want to share? Let me give a, a shout out to our Diamond Line dance team. Uh, they're, they're performing tomorrow. So hopefully we get that in before the weather. Um, girls basketball is in second place. They're, they're doing real well. Um, just overall, our ag program, our uh, CNA students, ROTC students, like they're buying into the culture we're trying to build. We have a great athletic director that believes in whole child development, doesn't believe in, in one kid playing one sport. He wants them to do everything. Um, and I think uh, it's not nothing innovative, but I think we're really digging deep into learner-centered leadership, like what that really looks like, student-led conferences. You know, um, we're partnering with Summit Education at the middle level to do personalized learning. Um, we want that to filter up, right? At the end of the kid's um, career in, in high school, like some kind of capstone project, mm -hmm. um, some kind of community service project. Um, but we have great career technologies, and, and we had one conversation with uh, Austin Community College and looking at an advanced manufacturing pathway uh, with Tesla. Yeah. And, and that's exciting, right? That's game changing, the salaries they pay. Um, so we're going to look at that. We're about three or four years away from um, talking to Redbird Aviation. Oh, nice. Uh, San Marcus about an aviation pathway. Are you going to, are you going to, Get your license and, uh, and jump on board. I, I, don't know, I just met a CEO somewhere that flies around, and he's like, it's worth it. So we're going to start with the kids first. <laughs> Not the guy that tripped, tripped coming over here. Test it out on the kids. Yeah, that's the kid that fell off the curb. Yeah. The soup that fell off the curb a little bit ago. But uh, we'll let the kids have at it first. You know what I think you need? You brought up FFA 
I think the I think your corgi needs a a a, a pal, mm -hmm. an odd couple friendship. Why don't you adopt one of the one of your animals from FFA and, and introduce that to the we, family? We tried to have some chickens. What? Okay, so you yeah, we had a chicken coop. What do you mean you tried to? Well, <laughs> four or five corgis surrounding the chicken coop. <laughs> wasn't good for the heart condition of the, the chickens. So, the so there was no goring involved, but apparently there was some so they all had heart attack. They, <laughs> they all had a heart attack. So we bought six chickens and, you know, they didn't last very long. So <laughs> we've, they don't play nicely. They're herding animals, so they don't play nicely with other, uh, you know, if we bring a German Shepherd or a Boxer into the, man, right. they're they're all over that thing, <laughs> trying to herd that thing into the corner, and uh, I feel See, bad. You got to start like like a little baby pig, and that way the pig latches on and prints on the mom, so they just thinks it's a it's a it's a puppy. We have a hamster, and he has survived <laughs> being in the mouth of one of the corgis. He's agile. And we have a uh, a parrot. My wife has a parrot, and so does the parrot talk. Parrot does talk. What does it say? Uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> telling you to be quiet. That's what I'm doing. What are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, hi, beautiful. It says hi, beautiful to my, to my wife. So smart parent. Um, yeah, so we, have, we used to have a python, uh, you know, small reticulated python. Yeah. Um, so that's an yeah, oxymoron, that right, oxymoron right there, small reticulated yeah, python. Yeah. <laughs> It was big enough to eat my hand, but not big enough to eat me. So <laughs> it was calm. It was it was fine, but we got rid of that when we got another corgi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That looked like a start. Looked like a snack over yeah, there yeah. in the corner to a python. Corgi puppy might <laughs> yeah. get eaten. So. Oh, that's funny. Oh, well. Um, where do you go from here, right? You've had a, a heck of a, a superintendency, a heck of a career. You've mentored and led. A ton of us young guys. Um, where do you go from here? To Europe, I hope. <laughs> to Europe. To uh, Italy. Spain in March. Um, I, I don't know. That that is something I think about. Um, you know, we all think we want to make. We hope we make an impact. Right. But um, you know, had a former colleague. You know, Chip Sullinger. Right. Um, he was a good man, and um, I don't want to be him. Like, I don't want to die in an apartment by myself. Um, I, I would like to see the world. Like, so I, I think I want to retire, and my wife and I want to potentially pack up our corgis and go see the world for a good, you know, five to eight years. Yeah. And then when my children are having children, then that's the time to come back home and settle down. And then keep mentoring um, yeah. superintendents, um, anyone. I mean, I, I think anybody who reaches out to me, I'll, I help, I think I would, I try to help them. No, you, I mean, I, um, you know, I, anytime I have something, you're the first person I call and it's, you're immediately responsive, you know? So, I mean, I think I, I just want to step away and hear silence for a while. Uh, really gotten into barbecuing um, now we're talking. There you go. A and M's got a great, you know, nah. barbecue program there, and um, only because I I like staying up at night. You you're up at night anyway. You right. know, you're up Can't at night up. anyway, and it's you, the fire, and a piece of meat, and quiet, yep. and you can just be by yourself. And you know, I love my wife, but. Um, you need quiet time, and so that's I'll become that. my quiet time. I'll edit that out. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that. My wife knows that. She's yeah. yeah she's, she's not. She's good. She people. needs quiet time for me too. <laughs> yeah, so. she's like, she's like, yes, go, go, away. go. Don't hey, bring that nonsense you, in the building. <laughs> you sure you want? You, you probably need a brisket. A whole twelve hours will probably. Yeah. Do. Oh yeah. 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 She's. Uh, but it's quiet. Like you know, we're in a field that's. Yeah, it's chaos. It's it's, it's, it's a chaos. Control every day chaos yeah. and. Um, you know, 30, now 31 years of that is a lot of chaos, and it, man, has a physical effect on you, so. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Well, 
thank you for joining me again. Uh, you're always welcome. I'm, I had a great time when we came out to the stadium, man. It's a beautiful stadium. Get to come out again. I know. I know. I want to come see programs, man. That's what we were talking about off air. It's like, we're going to come out there and see the programming. Yeah. That's what, because like you said, being a high school prince, we could see that every day. Yep. And now, you know. We want our kids to show y'all. That, exactly. The, but, the programming. And, exactly. And we want them to tell their story. Ultimately, you're trying, I, you know, the goal is always for me is to turn it over to them. Correct. Right. Turn it. It's theirs. Right. Correct. Ultimately, we're building it for them. So they have ownership. They can do it. They have a skill. They have something that they love to do. And we're just there to support some guardrails from time to time. Correct. You know? So, yeah, any I appreciate you. Any shout, shout outs before you go? You better uh, give them I can't shout out my Spurs because they, they have ups and downs. You know, they can beat Phoenix, but they can't beat a last place team. Um, can't shout out my Steelers. They, they haven't been. No. Can't shout out my Blackhawks. They're, they're awful right now. Uh, just shout out to our uh, student staff and community there, San Marcos CISD. I think our teachers have been amazing. I'll even shout out our board members. Um, I'm really blessed to be we don't always agree on a lot of stuff, and I'm sure that they don't agree with my leadership style um, in some ways, but they do agree with 100% of the things we do uh, for kids, and they help me create really good systems for kids. They've allowed us to do some really great work, and so you know, we just finished uh, Board Appreciation Month, and so I do want to give them a shout out. Even the new board members who come you know, have stayed with the focus of student learner-centered outcomes. Uh, which which I am grateful for when I look at you know other colleagues sure. around the state. Sci Fair, I won't name names. Oh but dang! Yeah, you're neck of the woods. That's like, must, that like right at the heart. Yeah, Dr. Henry's uh, like I, I just edited that out uh, for him. Yeah. yeah, he's a great man. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't envy him. But no. yeah, so that, that's my shout out. All right. Well, thank you for being here. All and, right. Um, look forward to talking to you. Real soon. Stay out of the snow. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. All right.